In today's video, we're having a look at overclocking the Ryzen 9 5950X all the way up to 5117 megahertz using a supercharged PBO. But we also learned that blindly chasing higher frequencies isn't always the right approach when it comes to trying to maximize system performance through overclocking. We're also having a look at the X570S Carbon EKX motherboard. This is the first AMD variant in the Carbon EKX series by EK and MSI. All right, there is a lot of information and data to get through, so let's get started. The AMD Ryzen 9 5950X launched all the way back last November alongside its smaller brothers, the 5900X and the 5800X, as well as the 5600X. The 16 core 7 nanometer part has a base frequency of 3400 MHz and a listed maximum boost frequency of 4900 MHz. In today's video, we are pairing the 5950X with the EK Quantum MSI MPG X570S Carbon EKX motherboard. The X570S Carbon EKX is the latest arrival in the EK and MSI collaboration range after the Z490 and Z590 variants. It is thus the first offer for AMD platform. Given the success of AMD in the PC DIY enthusiast space, it makes sense for the Carbon EKX to also get a Team Red variant. The X570S motherboards feature an improved X570 chipset and are now able to run a silent passive cooling solution. So the S stands for silent. MSI also took this refresh opportunity to significantly upgrade the specification of their motherboard lineup. The parts we are particularly concerned with in this video is the upgraded VRM and improved PCB design. If you want to learn more, sorry, no, if you want to learn everything about the MSI X570S motherboard lineup, you can rewatch the three hour MSI X570S launch live stream on the MSI gaming channel. In this video, we'll be covering four overclocking strategies. First, we increase the performance headroom by enabling precision boost overdrive and AXMP. Second, we manually overclock the CPU to 4450 MHz Prime 95 AVX and 4588 MHz Prime 95 non-AVX stable. Third, we tune the Precision Boost Overdrive algorithm with Curve Optimizer. Lastly, we achieve 5117 MHz by supercharging Precision Boost Overdrive. However, before we jump into the overclocking, let's first have a look at the benchmarks and hardware that we'll be using in this guide. Along with the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X processor and EK Quantum MSI X570S Carbon EKX motherboard, in this guide, we will be using a pair of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 4266 memory sticks, an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, a 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD drive, a Seasonic Prime 850 watt platinum power supply, the Elmo Labs Easy Fan Controller, the Elmo Labs P80 DB2 debug card, and EK Quantum water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be about $4,100. I covered the functionality and how to set up the Elmo Labs EFC in a separate video on this channel. Without going into too many details, I have attached an external temperature sensor from the water in the loop to the EFC. Then I used the low high setting to map the fan curve from 25 to 40 degrees water temperature. This is used for all overclocking strategies. We use the following benchmark applications to measure performance and ensure system stability. Before we get into any of the overclocking, we should first check what's the performance of the system at stock settings. Please note that the Carbon EKX has the Precision Boost Overdrive enabled by default. So in order for us to know what the performance at stock settings is, we must first go into the BIOS and go to the OC menu, enter the Advanced CPU Configuration, enter the AMD Overclocking submenu, and set Precision Boost Overdrive to Disabled then save and exit the BIOS. Here is the benchmark performance at stock. Here are the 3 Mark CPU profile scores at stock. When running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the average effective CPU clock is 2,972 MHz with 0.942 volts. The average CPU temperature is 50 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 41 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 120 watts. 
When running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the average effective CP clock is 3526 MHz with 0.957 volts. The average CPU temperature is 51 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 42 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 113 watts. Let's get into our first overclocking strategy. But first, make sure to locate the CMOS clear button at the back IO panel of your motherboard. In case your system fails to boot up after you've configured your settings, pressing this button will force the system to reset the BIOS settings. So you can return to the BIOS easily and make the necessary adjustments. In our first overclocking strategy, we simply make use of the overclocking technologies Precision Boost Overdrive and XMP. I covered both of these technologies in a separate video on this channel already, so any aspiring AMD overclocker should be well familiar with both of them. PBO stands for Precision Boost Overdrive. It is an extension of the Precision Boost technology integrated in all AMD Ryzen CPUs. Precision Boost allows the CPU to opportunistically increase its clock frequency over base frequency based on the available power and thermal headroom. Precision Boost Overdrive preserves all of the automated intelligence and boost built into the Ryzen CPU. So AMD claims it provides the user with the best of both worlds. On the one hand, it provides the user with an ability to leverage superior cooling to achieve higher performance. And on the other hand, the algorithm will still aim to maximize the performance in a wide variety of workloads. Precision Boost uses a proprietary algorithm with inputs from a plethora of sensors inside the CPU to determine what is the optimal frequency and voltage at any given time. It is important to mention that using Precision Boost Overdrive is a form of overclocking and is therefore not covered by warranty. AXMP is MSI's name for the implementation of XMP on AMD platforms. XMP is an Intel technology that lets you automatically overclock the system memory to improve system performance. XMP is an extension to the standard JDEX specification that allows a memory vendor to program different settings onto the memory sticks. The settings include the memory frequency, the memory timings, as well as the memory voltage. In our case, the XMP rating of our memory is DDR4-4266. So by enabling AXMP, we not only increase the memory frequency, but we also change the Infinity Fabric to a synchronous mode. By default, the Infinity Fabric, memory controller and memory frequency operate in synchronous mode. That means the CPU will run all frequencies in one-to-one -one ratio. Synchronous mode is taxing for the CPU, so on most Ryzen CPUs, the system will automatically enable asynchronous mode beyond a certain memory frequency. In asynchronous mode, the memory controller will operate at half the frequency of the system memory, so you will have a performance penalty. However, with enough memory speed, you can overcome that performance penalty. Most Ryzen 5000 CPUs will not run synchronous mode over DDR4-4000. As our XMP rating is DDR4-4266, the system will automatically switch to asynchronous mode. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the OC menu. Enter the Advanced CPU Configuration submenu. Enter the AMD Overclocking submenu. Set Precision Boost Overdrive to Enabled. Leave the AMD Overclocking submenu. Leave the Advanced CPU Configuration submenu. Set AXMP to Profile 1. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default operation. Enabling Precision Boost Overdrive allows the CPU to run at higher power consumption. So we expect to see the largest performance gains in multi-threaded applications. And that is in fact what we see with up to plus 17.73% benchmark performance increase and up to plus 20.98 increase in 3 Mark CPU profile. When running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4085 MHz with 1.115 volts. The average CPU temperature is 79 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 63 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 220 watts. When running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4,295 MHz with 1.184 volts. The average CPU temperature is 80 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 63 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 228 watts. 
Our second overclocking strategy actually covers two sub-strategies. We want to do some manual overclocking on our CPU, but in order to judge the stability, we will use two different approaches. Let's call these strategies 2A and 2B. In our first approach, we want to check stability in an ultimate worst case scenario. For me, that's Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX enabled. As far as I'm concerned, if the system can pass that benchmark test, it can handle any kind of workload, no matter how tough. In our second approach, we'll use a more common scenario. Uh, we'll check the stability with Prime 95 small FFTs and AVX disabled, but we still have the requirement that our system must be able to pass all of the benchmarks that we use to measure system performance. We also overclock each CCD separately. CCD stands for Core Chiplet Die and is one of the chips on the AMD CPU. On Zen 3, a CCD consists of a single CCX with 8 cores. While there is only one CPU core voltage plane for a Ryzen 5000 CPU, we can maximize the frequency for each CCD individually. The difference between strategy 2A and strategy 2B is about 150 megahertz for CCD0 and 125 megahertz for CCD1. For strategy 2A, upon entering the BIOS, go to the OC menu. Set CPU ratio apply mode to per CCX. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 44.50. Set CCD1 CCX0 ratio to 44.50. Set AXMP to profile 1. Set CPU core voltage to override mode. Set override CPU core voltage to 1.175 volt. Then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default operation. We see the biggest performance gains of up to 22.34% in multi-threaded benchmark applications. Sadly, we also see significant performance losses up to minus 10.15% in single and low threaded benchmark applications. That is because at default, the precision boost technology enables frequencies of up to 4,900 MHz, whereas our manual overclock is limited to 4,450 MHz. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4,450 MHz with 1.182 volts. The average CPU temperature is 97 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 78 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 274 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4450 MHz with 1.18 volts. The average CPU temperature is 83 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 66 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 234 watts. For strategy 2B, upon entering the BIOS, go to the OC menu. Set CPU ratio apply mode to per CCX. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 46. Set CCD1 CCX0 ratio to 45.75. Set AXMP to profile 1. Set CPU core voltage to override mode. Set override CPU core voltage to 1.2375 volt then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default operation. We see the same result in strategy 2B as we saw with strategy 2A. Significant performance gains of up to plus 26.47% in multi-threaded benchmark applications, but performance losses up to minus 7.23% in low threaded benchmarks. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the system does not pass the stability tests, even though it could run all of our other benchmarks. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4588 MHz with 1.244 volts. The average CPU temperature is 95 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 74 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 272 watts. In our third overclocking strategy, we return to Precision Boost Overdrive and make use of the tools that are provided by AMD to tune the algorithm to our liking. We follow the PBO tuning process as outlined in Scatterbencher 24 with the Ryzen 7 5700G processor. As we have covered Precision Boost Overdrive 2 in detail in another video, I won't put you through the same theory again. Practically, we follow the same process. That means we choose a fixed CPU vCore load line, 
manually increase the PBO power and current limits, increase the maximum CPU boost clock override by 200 MHz, and use Curve Optimizer to tune each CPU core individually. The result is that the PBO algorithm much more aggressively pursues higher voltages, which in turn will lead to higher frequencies. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the OC menu. Enter the Advanced CPU Configuration submenu. Enter the AMD Overclocking submenu. Set Precision Boost Overdrive to Advanced. Set PBO Limits to Manual. Set PPT Limit to 500. Set TDC Limit to 500. Set EDC Limit to 500. Set Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler to Manual. Set Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler to 10x. Set Max CPU Boost Clock Override to 200 MHz. Enter the Curve Optimizer submenu. Set Curve Optimizer to Per Core. Set Core 0 to Core 15 Optimizer Sign to Negative. Set All Curve Optimizer Magnitude for all cores except for Core 1, Core 3 and Core 15 to 30. Set Core 1 Curve Optimizer Magnitude to 10. Set Core 3 Curve Optimizer Magnitude to 20. Set Core 15 Curve Optimizer Magnitude to 25. Leave the Curve Optimizer submenu. Leave the AMD Overclocking submenu. Leave the Advanced CPU Configuration submenu. Set AXMP to Profile 1. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to the default operation. Our benchmark performance gains over stock settings range from plus 1.17% in Cinebench R23 Single to plus 26.17% in 3 d Mark CPU Profile Max threads. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4214 MHz with 1.089 volts. The average CPU temperature is 79 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 63 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 217 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4297 MHz with 1.125 volts. The average CPU temperature is 73 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 58 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 204 watts. In the final overclocking strategy, we are looking to supercharge PBO and extract even more performance from our system. I already explained in a previous video using the 5900X what I mean by supercharging PBO. That video ended up being quite long, so I'll try to keep it a little bit shorter here. PBO supercharged sits at the very top of the Ryzen overclocking pyramid, which starts at the CPU base frequency. The listed base frequency for the Ryzen 9 5950X is 3400 MHz. For Ryzen 5000 CPUs, right above the base frequency is Precision Boost 2. Precision Boost allows the processor cores to run faster than the base frequency and thus improve the system performance. Precision Boost 2 employs a proprietary algorithm that brings together all of the different inputs, then calculate what is the highest allowed voltage that can be set. While there's no detailed information available on how the algorithm works exactly, what we do know is that generally speaking, the more thermal, current and power headroom there is available, the higher your CPU will boost. For the Ryzen 9 5950X, the listed maximum boost frequency is 4.9 GHz. The keyword in that last sentence is listed. On Ryzen CPUs, there's kind of three boost limits. There's the advertised limit, there's the programmed limit, and then there's the actual real world limit. The advertised limit is what you'll find on the CPU box or on the AMD website. The programmed limit is what is actually put in the Agesa firmware by AMD, which is included in the motherboard BIOS. And then the actual real world limit is the frequency that's reported by software tools like CPU-Z. At stock on my CPU, the maximum boost frequency ranges from 4,826 MHz to 5,001 MHz. But that's not quite it yet. The next big thing to understand is that there is a difference between the core frequency and the effective clock. Everything that I've discussed up to now relates to the core frequency. The core frequency is the frequency that is configured by the CPU and read by software tools from the CPU registers. It is a frequency that you'll see reported in CPU-Z, for example. 
Effective Clock measures the average actual clock cycles across a polling interval. The difference between the two values is that the core frequency is the frequency as measured at a specific moment in time, whereas the effective clock measures the total clock cycles between two moments in time. These two measurements can differ a lot because modern CPUs like the Ryzen 5000 have very advanced power saving features. When a CPU core has nothing to execute, it will quickly go to a low power state. Another reason why the effective clock can be very different from the core frequency is clock stretching. Clock stretching is a safety feature that is built into all of the Ryzen CPUs. When the CPU figures the actual voltage is too low to sustain a stable system at a given frequency, it will suspend the execution of tasks until stability is regained. The result of clock stretching is that while the system will report the core clock as normal, the effective clock will be lower because there are fewer amount of clock cycles. Obviously, the performance will also be lower. For users like you and I, what actually matters is the effective clock because that relates directly to the compute performance of your system. So while it's nice to talk about the advertised or the programmed or the real world boost limit, in the end, none of all that matters unless it means that the effective clock is higher too. At stock, on my CPU, the maximum effective clock frequency ranges from 4,674 MHz on Core 8 to 4,975 MHz on Core 1. Along with the Precision Boost technology, AMD also developed the Precision Boost Overdrive technology specifically for overclockers. Precision Boost Overdrive preserves all of the automated intelligence and boost that comes with the Precision Boost algorithm. However, it provides overclockers with some additional tools and options to manipulate the algorithm, so it would boost higher in both single-threaded and multi-threaded workload situations. There are six tools to highlight. PPT Limit, EDC Limit, TDC Limit, Scalar, Boost Override, and Curve Optimizer. I covered these extensively in Scatterbencher 24 and Scatterbencher 26, so I won't cover them in detail here again. When enabling PBO on my CPU, the maximum boost frequency ranges from 4650 MHz on Core 8 to 4975 MHz on Cores 1 and 3. The maximum effective clock ranges from 4652 MHz on Core 8 to 4975 MHz on Core 1. When enabling Precision Boost Overdrive in the BIOS, you'll likely get settings that have been suggested by AMD or that have been programmed by the motherboard vendor. However, you can also manually tune all of these settings to your own liking. That's exactly what we did in our previous overclocking strategy. When manually tuning PBO on my CPU, the maximum boost frequency ranges from 4,700 MHz on cores 0, 2, and 5, to 5,025 MHz on core 3. The maximum effective clock ranges from 4,781 MHz on core 8 to 5,012 MHz on core 1. After PBO tuned comes PBO supercharged. In order to better explain what I mean by a supercharged PBO, let's have a look again at the VF curves. The voltage frequency curve or VF curve is a line that describes the relationship between the operating frequency and the voltage required to run stably at that frequency. Each individual core in your AMD Ryzen CPU has a VF curve. Better cores which require less voltage for a given frequency will be able to boost to higher frequencies given a certain voltage. Precision Boost technology and its extension Precision Boost Overdrive use this VF curve information to dynamically increase the CPU operating frequency. The boost algorithm determines the maximum allowed voltage for a given set of input parameters like power and thermal. Based on this maximum voltage, it then applies the according frequency based on the VF curve. Let's take a simplified example assuming all cores have the same VF curve and we're using a single threaded benchmark application. If the load is very light, the maximum allowed voltage might be 1.3 volt, in which case the frequency will be the associated 4900 MHz. If the load is very heavy, then the maximum allowed voltage might only be 1.1 volt and then the associated frequency is 4475 MHz. One of the most powerful tools included in Precision Boost Overdrive is the Curve Optimizer. Curve Optimizer allows us to adjust the VF curve for each individual core 
positively or negatively up to 30 steps of 3 to 5 millivolt. So maximum minus 150 millivolts to plus 150 millivolts. Returning to our example, if our CPU is really good and we can offset the entire curve by negative 30 steps, the voltage required for a given frequency is much lower. So if we have a heavy workload and the maximum allowed voltage is 1.1 volt, the associated frequency is now 4825 megahertz instead of 4475 megahertz. However, our maximum frequency is still limited to 5025 megahertz, which will be run at 1.25 volt instead of 1.40 volt. To solve this frequency ceiling, we can use another PBO tool called Maximum Boost Override. AMD allows for up to 200 megahertz higher frequency ceiling than default. In our case, that would open up the frequency to 5,225 megahertz. However, that doesn't mean the frequency will also boost that high as we are still limited by a maximum voltage of 1.5 volt. Let's assume that our CPU could boost to even higher than 5,225 megahertz if the voltage could go over 1.5 volt. With the available PBO tools, we can't get this done. So that's where the PBO supercharged comes into action. While the precision boost algorithm is incredibly smart, there are still ways to outsmart it as a user. There are two important options that will help us in particular, reference clock and voltage offsets. The reference clock frequency is the base clock for many parts in our system, including the CPU cores, but also the system memory, PCIe and SATA. When increasing the base clock frequency, you change all the frequencies that use the reference clock. While this can result in additional performance, it can also cause instability, so please be careful. For example, on this platform, I must use an M.2 drive connected to the CPU PCIe lanes to use over 100.5 MHz base clock frequency as my SATA drives are no longer showing up. When increasing the reference clock from 100 MHz to 101.5 MHz, the frequency associated with a given voltage will increase by the same amount. So at 1.1 volt, we are now getting 4,897 MHz, or at 1.3 volts, we are now getting 5,151 MHz. This is of course a nice frequency bump, but without additional voltage, this won't be stable. By adding an additional voltage offset, we can look for stability at the highest frequency range. But also keep in mind that adding an offset to the entire VF curve means that you'll also get higher voltage at lower frequencies. In heavy multi-threaded workloads, that means you'll run out of thermal headroom much faster than without the voltage offset. In our example VF curve, we started out with 1.1 volt giving 4,475 megahertz and a maximum frequency of 5,025 megahertz at 1.4 volt. After supercharging PBO, our 1.1 volt now gives us 4,796 megahertz and our maximum frequency is 5,253 megahertz at 1.56 volt. Now that we have all the information on how to supercharge PBO, let's get into the BIOS and configure our overclock. Oh, before I forget, I also used MSI's Memory Triad feature to tune the memory a little bit further. Memory Triad is a memory overclocking feature unique to MSI and has been on MSI motherboards since the Z97 platform launched in May 2014 together with the Haswell Refresh processors. It aims to provide a step up from XMP when it comes to overclocking the system memory and offers an incredible range of overclocking profiles tuned for all popular memory chips on the market. I already explored how to use Memory Triad in a separate video, so check that one out if you want more information. I went through the process outlined in that video and in the end settled for the DDR4-4400 CL18 setting. This is a slightly increased frequency compared to our XMP and also slightly better memory timings. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the OC menu. Enter the Advanced CPU Configuration submenu. Enter the AMD Overclocking submenu. Set Precision Boost Overdrive to Advanced. Set PBO Limit to Manual. Set PPT Limit to 1000. Set TDC Limit to 500. Set EDC Limit to 500. Set Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler to Manual. Set Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler to 10x. Set Max CPU Boost Clock Override to 200 MHz. Enter the Curve Optimizer submenu. Set Curve Optimizer to Per Core. Set Core 0 to Core 15 Optimizer Sign to Negative. Set Core 1 Curve Optimizer Magnitude to 4. 
set core 3 curve optimizer magnitude to 11. Set core 10, core 13 and core 14 curve optimizer magnitude to 20. Set core 15 curve optimizer magnitude to 10. Set curve optimizer magnitude for all remaining cores to 26. Leave the curve optimizer submenu. Set LCLK DPM enhanced PCIe detection to disabled. Leave the AMD overclocking submenu. Leave the advanced CPU configuration submenu. Set FCH base clock megahertz to 101.3125. Set AXMP to profile 1. Set memory triad to DDR4 4400 18 22 22 22 42 F clock 1800 MHz. Enter the digital power submenu. Set CPU load line calibration control to mode 3. Leave the digital power submenu. Set CPU core voltage to offset mode. Set CPU offset mode mark to plus. Set CPU offset voltage to 0.0625 volt. Then save and exit the BIOS. After supercharging PBO, the maximum boost frequency ranges from 4,838 MHz on cores 10 and 14 to 5,117 MHz on core 2. The maximum effective clock ranges from 4,800 MHz on core 8 to 5,046 MHz on core 3. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default operation. We see steady improvement in all benchmark applications and we see the highest performance numbers in single-threaded benchmarks like SuperPi, Geekbench 5, Cinebench R23, 3 Mark Night Raid, and CSGO. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the average effective CPU clock is 3901 MHz with 1.197 volts. The average CPU temperature is 90 degrees Celsius, and the average VRM temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 257 watts. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4053 MHz with 1.242 volts. The average CPU temperature is 86 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 66 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 248 watts. Before we wrap up this video, let's have a closer look at the supercharged PBO results because there's a couple of things I want to highlight. Firstly, as I mentioned before, supercharging PBO by adding an additional voltage offset means we get a higher effective voltage, not only for low load and high frequency, but also for high load and low frequency. In heavy multi-threaded workloads, that means we're running out of thermal headroom faster than without this additional voltage offset. That is exactly what we see with our PBO supercharged versus the PBO tuned. While our top end frequency marginally increases, resulting in slightly higher performance, we lose a lot of frequency in heavy multi-threaded benchmark applications, resulting in lower performance. After supercharging PBO, our biggest performance gain is in CSGO with plus 1.65% better performance compared to the PBO tuned. Our biggest performance loss is minus 4.8% in Cinebench R23. While I would love to say that I'm shocked and surprised about these results of the supercharged PBO, we have to be honest and admit that the writing was kind of on the wall with this one. The main purpose of supercharging PBO is to overcome the frequency ceiling limitation set by AMD. In this case, not even a single core of our CPU was reaching the maximum ceiling of 5225 MHz after tuning PBO. So there was limited headroom at the top end. All right, let's wrap this up. When I started working on this video, I had two main objectives. First, I wanted to see how the X570S Carbon EKX would handle an overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. Second, I also wanted to see if the methodology for supercharging PBO, which I laid out in my previous Scatterbencher video with the 5900X, if it would also allow me to extract more performance out of my 5950X CPU. When it comes to handling an overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X, I think the Carbon EKX did pretty well. In our worst case scenario of manually overclocking and then testing it with Prime95 small FFTs and AVX enabled, at 4.45 gigahertz, the CPU package power was about 274 watts. The CPU temperature remained below 100 degrees centigrade and the VRM temperature remained below 80 degrees centigrade. So 
I think as far as handling an overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X, the X570X uh, Carbon, uh, the X570S Carbon EKX did pretty well. It didn't really look like our CPU was the best overclocker out there, so it's kind of a pity that we weren't able to push the CPU even further uh, when doing our manual overclocking. And this kind of a tragic silicon lottery aspect of overclocking also returned when we're trying to tune uh, or trying to supercharge precision boost overdrive. We ultimately reached a maximum overclock of 5,117 megahertz for a single core and an average of 4,942 megahertz across all cores. Ultimately, that is still 100 megahertz short of what the precision boost algorithm should be able to boost that after adjusting with the maximum boost override. So it should be able to boost to 5,225 megahertz. As I mentioned before, supercharging PBO did help us get higher frequencies in single thread applications. So we got 30 megahertz higher uh, peak effective clock and about 150 megahertz average uh, effective clock. However, the additional performance that we get at the top end comes at a cost of lower multi-threaded performance. Don't get me wrong, uh, our supercharged PBO is still much more uh, or still has a lot more performance than stock. We see about 21% performance uplift. However, you know, in multi-threaded applications, our regular PBO tuned has an uplift of 26%, so a little bit higher. The root cause of this happening is, you know, quite obvious. In order for us to squeeze a little bit more frequency at the top end, we needed a little bit more voltage. So we used the voltage offset. However, this voltage offset isn't just applied for the very high frequencies. It's also applied for the mid-range frequencies. So what happens is that we essentially give our 16 cores, all of them, a little bit more extra voltage in a heavy workload and that will just make us run out of thermal headroom much much more quicker so what happens then is that the pbo algorithm says oh you're running a little bit too hot let's lower the frequency so while our pbo supercharged strategy wasn't the greatest success i still want to end this on a positive note i think the main lesson to be learned from this overclocking experience is that blindly chasing higher frequency is maybe not always the right approach when it comes to trying to get um, more performance out of your systems. Because in the end, we need to focus on what's most important for getting more performance. And that's the effective clock in a wide range of benchmark applications, not just the light workloads, but also the heavy workloads. That's how we determine that actually our second to last overclocking strategy is the right one. PBO tuned gives us the highest performance in you know the the vast majority of our uh, of our benchmarks. So that will be the settings that we use for this system. I do hope that you enjoyed this video, despite a little bit of a bummer of a last strategy. I have a couple of videos in the works for both AMD and Intel platforms, so feel free to subscribe if you want to see more overclocking guides in the future. For those who want to have a look at my settings in detail, as well as the scores in detail, I will put up a written version of this video on my blog. As per usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and see you next time.